Okay, so muscles. Um, so it feels weird, I guess, to start with the back. I don't know, maybe it seems more sensible to start with the front. But the reason why I do that is so that we can start to appreciate that if we're studying anatomy, I think, correctly, then what we're looking at is complexity built off of layers of simplicity. So we need to define everything in its simplest terms uh, and then we add and we add and we add and the end result feels complex but it shouldn't be if that makes sense. So first off we find the bone and we see how simple we can make the bone and then we see what muscle sits on top of the bone and what tendon attaches the muscle and what fat sits on top of the muscle and then the quality of the skin on top of that and by the end of it you know you've thought about many things and so the end result is very complex but each part should be fairly simple so it's for that reason that I'm looking at the back and going okay we need to peel off to get to the lowest level the lowest level is the bone right I mean there's the stuff inside the bones right or inside the rib cage you've got the heart lungs things like that we're not going to talk about that so we'll finish at the bone and then once we've hit the bone, we then start to walk backwards from there. And the first thing that we're going to see is these deep muscles. So there's three of these that I want to talk about. Um, this, uh, the first thing that we're looking at is the lumbar mass through here. And this I find very, very difficult to teach, but it's, it's maybe a little bit easier to, um, to, to show, you know, when we can actually build it like this. So what we have is like these two ovals, these two egg shapes through here, that the border of them is is somewhere lined up with the border of the scapula. So I've, I've made mine too wide, too far out. And the, the thing that makes this confusing, I think, as a student studying this, is that if you then look in an anatomy book, if you turn to Richer and go, okay, what is this mass that Chris is talking about? Suddenly you're just like, whoa, whoa, there's loads of muscles there that Chris isn't mentioning. And you know, I'm just simplifying these um, because that's how they look on the surface. Um, so I have those and you know, these we can group together and call them the erector spinae muscles. That is, that is the name for the collection of muscles through there. And then we can create a cylindrical form through here, which we'll put in the middle. Um, and this would be the multifidus muscles. And the multifidus muscles are many, many small muscles, like many, many, many small muscles. Um, so again, we're not going to make each one of those muscles. We're just going to simplify them and, and think about them as a single mass. So we do shrink them down. These are the ones that are going to plug into the sacrum. All right, so they go right the way into there. And then they're going to move all the way up the back. But at some point, we're going to lose sight of them because you have these bigger muscles sat on top. Now, I just need to place these muscles a little bit better from the side. But if you, so something like this is more accurate, but if you're looking at the figure from the side, you're looking at those muscles and this overlap, this is going to be especially important if you have a side from your drawing, that overlap, that, that form overlapping that is very important, very noticeable in life. And these, so th these forms, you know, these two tight cylinders and these two kind of, uh, what more? oblique leaning uh, egg shapes very very noticeable both in the male and the female but um, they're going to look a little bit different from person to person but like just study them I know I talk about that a lot but the problem is they're covered by the, the latissimus muscle right which is covers all of that but it doesn't really cover up their form um, so this is I would say the most important muscular mass at the back and then let's I'm going to use a, a sphere for this this is going to be our serratus or our serratus anterior, the serratus of the front or the serratus, at least it's moving towards the front. So um, what this muscle mass is doing, and, and sorry, I, I, I should have, before we go into serratus, just forget the serratus for a minute. Let's talk about what the muscle mass is doing. Where is it coming from and where is it going to? So you can look at it like this. It's basically going from the hips and it's going to the base of the head. And because it's so many muscles, it has 100 points of origin, 100 points of insertion. But it's basically going from the bottom of the body to the top. So it's strengthening that whole area up through there. And it's also strengthening this area through there where there is no, you know, well, there's the spine. And that's the only bit of bone we have to strengthen that through there. So it's one of the core muscles, right? And it's antagonistic to 
the muscle of the front through there, which will be the, uh, the rectus abdominis, which we're going to look into, but not in this video. So this mass is basically holding the body upright or pulling it back, right? You think you attach a bit of string to there, and you attach a bit of string to there, and you pull on that string, the effect is going to be something like this. And that's that muscle. I mean, you can try this, right? Lie on the floor, face down, and lift your back up like that, and see how long you can hold it for. At some point, you're going to feel a lot of pain down there, and that's, that's those muscles running out of energy. You think you do the opposite, you lie on your back, pull your body forwards, then you'll feel it in your abs, right? That's a crunch. So that's the, the, the main shape and the main function of the, um, of the lumbar muscles. Now, this mass that I'm blocking in through here is the serratus anterior. So this mass is coming and going underneath the scapula. Right, so it's grabbing, if I can grab my scapula through here, it's grabbing like that inside border room all the way down there. So the portion there, of course, isn't visible. But this portion down here, where it comes off the bottom of the scapula and then comes down the right down the side of the body, that line is visible. And god damn it, no one no one studies it, you know, and they and they really should be. Um, so what's happening is if I thin these out. A little bit what they're doing is that they're, they're originating here right on the side of the rib cage so this is where you're going to be familiar with them because you get these uh, finger shapes right it's going something like this and this by the way is going it's going all the way up here it's just you're not going to see it you know up there on the first and second rib um, because it's diving underneath your your arm right through your armpit but uh, but it's going all the way up there each of these fingers are, are quite rounded, you know. And then if you if there was to be a nipple on here, you can take the nipple and kind of draw a curve from the back, and that gives you the position of your of your serratus muscles, more or less. So that's where it's coming from. It's grabbing hold of the rib cage there, so its anchor point is there, and then it inserts onto the scapula. When it pulls the scapula to that point, it's that movement, right? So that is going to be, well, not this, because that's the scapula slamming inside the body, but you imagine the scapula moving around the rib cage, right? Something like that. And as it, as it moves around, it's gonna, it's gonna rotate, it's gonna contour to follow the shape of the rib cage. I'm gonna ask you to use your imagination a bit there because, um, because I'm feeling lazy. So that's, you, you imagine like if you were to punch your arm forward, that's what that muscle is doing. And so this line here, this line that's visible in life, will of course follow the scapula around. So let, let's say you try and touch your elbows behind your back. That's going to be a movement like that, right? And so then that line there will move. And this is the serratus as it gets stretched out. This is the opposite of the action of the serratus, but that line will slide around under the skin. So, so if you have someone who kind of has a very V-shape to their body, that's, that's the, the serratus that they're building up. And the latissimus will help, it sits on top of that, but um, the majority of the meat through there is the serratus. In life, these, these, uh, like these fingers of the serratus that we're seeing there, we would generally expect to see three or four of them. So we'd see one, two, three, four, something like that. Five if we were lucky, but at this point, we're hitting the armpit and there's fat in the armpit that obscures the reed. So uh, we might start to see more if the arm is raised and the skin gets pulled tight over here. So. That's the serratus mass. So that's two of our three deep muscles that we're studying. So not so bad, right? Not so painful. Um, so the next one and the final one is the rhomboid mass. So let's shrink this down. And it's something like that. Well, I mean, I'm starting with a sphere. That might seem kind of weird because the shape of the rhomboids is like a rhombus shape. which is going to be something like this. Yeah, I should have just started with a cube here. That would have been easier. If you care, it's coming from C7, the seventh cervical vertebrae, going down to T5, the fifth thoracic vertebrae. Um, 
but I, I don't care. Uh, I mean, you know, as long as you're hitting that angle, that's the main thing. And, uh, and as long as you're getting the appreciation for the shape and what it does. So it's coming from the spine, right? So whether you know those vertebrae or not, I don't care as long as you know that it's coming from the spine. So that's its anchor point through there. It's going through grabbing hold of the scapula when it pulls one point towards the other. It's that, right? So now we revisit this movement. We saw that the serratus is gonna get stretched out here. That's not the movement the serratus wants to do at all. But the rhomboids happily squashing up here and as they do, they're gonna get shorter and fatter in the same way that all muscles do when they compress. And then you're gonna see that egg shape underneath the surface. Um, so the rhomboids, you can often find that line in life, like like pretty regularly, I would I would say maybe uh, sixty percent of the time, something like that. You can find that um, seventy percent if you if you're looking for it. Um, and then this line through here that sets up uh, what I call the rhomboid plane. So um, one way of looking at this is, and this is especially the case I think in in thin people, is that you can kind of have three planes have one plane there, one plane there for the scapula. So this, you know, these are clearly different planes, right? You see that going that way, that, that going that way. And then at the top here, when the, where the rhomboid breaks, we get another plane going over the shoulders through there. So you get one, two, three planes there. I'll, I'll look at this again, perhaps, when, uh, when we put the trapezius on top, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Okay, so yeah, that wasn't that wasn't so bad, right? I mean, we can look at the rhomboids a bit more, break them down into um, the the major and the minor. I don't, I don't care if you guys know about that. Um, that's why they call them the rhomboids because there's two of them here: the, the little one at the top, big one at the bottom. But um, uh, who cares? You know, <laughs> like just just know the significance of the you know of this line that we'll see that and, and be able to locate that. The plane change that you very uh, very well might see in life and uh, and then know what it does you have to know what all muscles are doing because then you know when they're compressed and when they're stretched and that helps you with the storytelling uh, telling element if you're just memorizing shapes you're just a what a, a squishy computer so you need to <laughs> you need to do better than that um, and that's that's it so yeah after this we'll swing around to the front and we'll start to look at muscles on the front